Hello, Mary Bain from The Bliss of Art. Thank you so much for joining me. And we are painting Mexican Bandito. Does she ever stop painting Mexicans, you ask? No, never. I love painting Mexican anything. Because guess what? 1,000% Mexican right here. So, before we begin, Mexican Bandito, I need to explain some of the things that are happening within the canvas, 16 by 20. It's already been gessoed. And then I did a yellow acrylics all over. And you can see in the middle around the head, there is a fluorescent color that I included as well. And the reason I included that color is I really want his face to shine because definitely you want the highlights and, and all the brilliant colors right around the face. The most important part to portraiture. I've also created, um, yeah, I just realized my lights are not, oh no, let me turn them on. I've also realized too that, um, that I need to do underpaintings essential for me, maybe not for you, maybe you are so skilled you don't need those talents, but I certainly do. I'm going to move the camera a little bit higher so it doesn't cut off my head totally. There we go. So yes, we, um, I've created the underpainting to show me where are my highlights, where are my shadows, where are my lightest and darkest areas, and then it just paints so quickly after that. You've already thought through the whole process, so it's easy peasy right from there. So, one other thing I want to mention quickly is Bernard, Charles Bernard is a professor from Online Art Academy, very, very excellent teacher. If you can ever visit his website, please do, because he explains the planes of the head. All those flat areas are so important in creating portraiture. Planes and contours, planes and contours. I can't repeat that enough. And if you can memorize some of those planes and contours, that's even better for you, for me, for everybody, because then your painting will look just like the picture. And this is the painting, the picture, sorry. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull it down and show it to you right here. And this picture, in this picture, you'll see that it is black and white. So you're saying, well, what colors are you going to use? Well, friends, guess what? Whatever colors you want to use. You can change those colors around. Monochromes are really uh, very popular now. So I'm going to be using many monochromes within uh, this portrait painting. So shall we begin? Yes. All right. Let me grab my brushes, and you know, throughout the uh, program, I do drop a brush every single time. And then my paints, I usually use the basic colors, red, yellow, and blue. And then this time I did add some Viridian. It's a, a beautiful, beautiful green, because I want the uh, cowboy to have a lot of turquoise colors within the outfits and throughout the pictures. And of course, I put a little bit of every color in each, each separate palette because each separate uh, color that I mixed up because you want those colors to all blend together just like a nice fine spring day. So blend those colors. So let's begin. And at the end of the show, I'll talk a little bit more about um, the Goldfield Ghost, which is where this picture was taken in App Apache Junction, Arizona. All right, so I'm gonna start with the big brush, big old fat brush, and I'm gonna go with my darkest area, which is at the hat. And so as you can see, I've already included in there those dark areas, so I'm just going over those dark areas with the same, same, uh, the same areas. And then I'm going down here. These are the darkest areas in the entire picture. And let me, Move. I need to set these brushes down. I have too many brushes in my hands. Oh, well, that wasn't a paintbrush, at least. That's good. 
All right, so go back in here and get a better, uh, better angle. Twirling my brush around, just making those strokes, not even caring too much because I have saved some of that paint. And you don't have to cover up every single piece of the underpainting, but you do want the underpainting to show through. And so I'm gonna go over here, there's a really dark area, and I'm looking at my picture too. And of course I've used my artograph to create the sketch. And there's a dark area, as you can see, down in here. And of course, I can't get to it with this big old fat brush. I need to reach over here and grab a different one. So when you're doing areas like here, where it gets thin and it goes thicker, you just use one brush. Don't get two or three brushes out. And you take it and you tap the brush. And I have a just nice flat brush and you tap it into the paint, get a little chiseled edge on it. And then I'm gonna start here, and then I'm gonna start, you know, at the top of the brush, and then I'm gonna swivel it in, and then I'm just gonna go to the wider side. Also, what I did was, before you were watching, I created some of the colors, and I put them on the painting to make sure that they were matching up, and they did match up perfectly. And sometimes you'll have to, um, You'll have to just add a little more color, more light, more darkness, whatever, to make it work. Okay, now there's a big area around the neck, and that's going to be very dark because there's no sun shining under this neck. And then it gets a little lighter here, so I'm not going to even worry about going into that. You know, you don't have to do that. Uh, I see here the... The, on my picture, which you can't see, I apologize. It comes out a little bit more, but I don't care. You know, and then there's a shadow here. So I've got the, the sideways part of the brush. Just gonna go in, grab some paint. Tap, tap, tap. Create a little chiseled edge on it to make it go from thick. And then twirling the brush to make it go to thin. And then down here, there's a dark shadow here, but it's not quite as dark. So you really want to go with your underpainting. Follow your underpainting because you've already created your, um, your steps through the underpainting. So follow those steps and those guidelines because they're great. You did those uh, uh, when I did them when I wasn't under on TV or under stress. So let me go on to the next color. So now I'm going to go to my lightest color, which is, whoops, I almost tripped on my... It is not my day. Sorry about that. I have to fix this microphone before I rip it out. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the lightest area, which is right around the face. And I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush. Reach over here. Grab these brushes. Okay. So go to your dark areas first. Your lightest areas next. And then they're always going to be around the cheeks. And so he's got a really dark... Um, light area in here so I'm going to cover that up with white and then right around here underneath the cheek and it kind of goes around the cheek and then the chin too the chin sticks out so the chin certainly is going to be very very light not just on this cowboy but on everybody now there's some uh, bright areas coming down here so I'm following my outline. I've already been given this outline. There's a bright area in here, but I'm not gonna do that one because I'm gonna do the bigger areas first. And then on the hat, the band, it's just a little tiny bit darker. So what I'm gonna do is, oops, it's way too dark. I can just tell by putting that on there. It must have touched another color. So I wanna go back in, grab some white to make sure I'm getting the colors the different values that I want. Yes, that's perfectly. Well, you might ask, how do you know if the value is correct? When you're putting an over an underpainting or when you're painting directly onto a canvas like I do with my artograph? Well, it should blend in like butter on a bread. You won't see it, it will just disappear and it will be there and you know it's there. So, use your underpaintings as your guideline. 
All right, so let's go back into here. Where was I? I see the cowboy. He's got some bright areas in here. So I'm going to just kind of do like a light area there. And then there's some like a, a V looking for my shapes right there. You don't have to cover up all the underpainting. Oh, whoops. I forgot where I was up here in the band. And that band goes outside the top of the hat part. Not even concerned. And when I, uh, I'm not concerned about getting that in perfectly because at the end, I do take a blender brush and I start blending those edges together while the paint is still wet. That's an excellent way to move paint around without touching, without having paint on a brush, if that makes sense. All right. So I've got the band done and I want to go in with a larger brush because now I have the medium colors and there's a lot of medium colors in there. I'll start off first on the top of the, eh, do I want to start with the hat? No, I want to start, I want to start with the, um, the jacket, the, the vest he has on. All right, and I got to put that color up there to make sure it's going to work and it's way too dark so I need to light and go to the lighter form. I can tell when I put it on there and I need to move these brushes. I keep painting I keep painting my easel. That's not a good thing because I'll end up having that on my outfit. Okay, so start up here and definitely yes, that is color is perfect. Maybe even a tad bit lighter. So I'm adding some white, titanium white in there, maybe even just a touch more, because I want that color to be perfect, and when you're changing values, when you're changing colors, not values, but when you're changing colors, and you're not doing the colors that's actually on the uh, painting or the picture, then you really have to, it's your guideline, you need to re definitely stick with the, that guideline. Okay, I'm going to go just a little bit lighter with that color because I can. And I'm going to go over here around the kerchief. And I'm going to go down here. And I see that cur that color is perfect for the uh, parts that I'm doing. And then I'm even going to go up here some and then go down here. Go back in for more paint, more paint. Twirling my brush because I want a little sharper point in there. Coming down here and it's going in. Putting my arm against my body, giving it some brace. All right, and then this color here is right there. And it tells me, I look at my picture and I see, yes, that's perfect. Letting some of that um, underpainting showing through because I can. Then it's a little bit lighter because it's getting further away from the sun. So I'm going to go in and grab some more white, put that white on there. Taking brush strokes every different direction because that's what you want to do. You don't want to limit yourself to just up and down vertical, horizontal, you want strokes going across, you want strokes that are forming the fabric, and those strokes need to be all kinds of different directions. Now this color is blending in just beautiful. Moving some of that color up here. Let's see, yes, that's where I want to go. wiggling my brush and my behind more medium color coming down here because on the picture the uh, the body is pulling against the fabric so you need to get those pulls in indicating that's the way the fabric goes if you've ever taken a class 
in how to create, um, how to draw with fabric, not with fabric, but how to draw and color in fabric. There was just all different directions and that was one of the hardest classes I've ever taken because I, I just, yeah, I just worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. And then I finally felt like I was successful, probably after the third picture and tearing up many pictures after that. All right, now I'm gonna go with a little bit uh, different color for the shirt. Before I do that, I need to come down here because that color is also down here. And this is gallery style canvas and the gallery, I mean, you go around the edges because when you go to the side of a canvas, you want to see something, right? I think it's a great uh, a way to paint. A friend of mine, Terry, taught me that. And so I've, ever, I've done it ever since. And it's very, very important. All right, and this cowboy was so gracious in letting me take his picture. Um, I'm going to go with, what should I go to next? All right, I should still add some of this color in here because there's a lot of light areas coming in there. It's still full sun. And then I can add some more light in here. And this is really light. So I'm going to go in and grab some white. Bring that color in here. I'm, just, I'm wiggling my brush. Coming down here. Adding more light colors. I added a little bit of different color there, a little bit of gray included in there. All right, so now what I can do is I can start filling in some of these uh, next colors since I have this brush here and I believe I've got it all covered. Yes, the other colors are just a little bit darker. So now I can go in and grab my medium tones because I, when I create, and that almost is a little bit too dark, when I'm mixing my paints, I don't create the paints. Somebody else does that, thankfully. When I'm creating, uh, mixing the paints, sorry, trying to concentrate on two different things, almost impossible. I always do a light, a medium, and a dark. Always, every single color, light, medium, dark, light, medium, and dark. Because you don't want to take away from the motion, your sudden motion in painting, and then suddenly you say, oh, I don't have enough paint and you have to stop and then you have to remember what colors you used and a good uh, pointer for you is from me a little, one of my little secrets so please don't tell anybody no tell everybody is put the colors tape them on the bottom of your um, your palette or take them tape them on the back or even write them in pencil on the back of the canvas so you're not guessing but with me it's easy because I don't use many colors and so I said, well, it's either red, yellow, or blue, or all three. So that's one good thing about being a good mixer. And it's one of the many talents that it just takes a lot of experience to do that. A whole ton of experience. All right, now I'm going to go in here with this tone here. It's creating some of those, those uh, folds that are within this fabric. Coming down here, going different directions because I can and because I want to and bringing that in look how those folds look so nice and then there's like folds that come straight down i guess it's not really a fold and then over here there's some of that same color in there now, i don't have a lot of color on the brush and that's good because you don't want everything to look exactly alike you want to definitely you know on one side you want it to look a little bit uh, darker than the other side you don't want exactness, all right? And for around the sleeve, I'm going just a little bit darker, but not too dark. And this area comes here and it comes there. I got a big old fat brush. So sometimes I can't get the motion that I want, but I try, I try my hardest. <laughs> Adding some of that detail right here. There's some dark areas. It gets pretty dark. Wiggling the brush, coming in, saying, ah, I think it ends there. Because in the picture, I don't have the entire body. 
You know, when you take pictures, you want to take when you when you're you're shooting, you want to take at least three shots: one distant, one medium, and one close up. And that way, you can get more detail of what you need to paint. You know, and and when you uh, when you get home, you can decide well which one am I going to have um, developed so I can do that painting. I'm going to add a little bit of this flesh color down here because I like it, but that's way too... I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in it to dull that color down, and that's perfect. And that color goes in over here. So look, I don't even have to look at the picture, honestly, because I'm just following the dots, friends. Following the dots. It's so easy so very easy I would recommend that you do the same thing especially if you're just starting off painting you want to do all that stuff that's going to help you be successful because you don't want to believe those lies that Satan tells you that you can't be successful in your painting hey babe will you uh, shut that door Today I am not in the studio by myself, which is good. Going around the buttons, and I might even leave those buttons the same color. All right, now you can see that, well, where did this line go here? That's on the right side of the scarf, and it ends there. Well, you can see that the scarf in the picture, the scarf and the vest, I'm not going to be able to get that down without dropping the whole thing. The scarf and the vest, they, the colors blend. There's no telling difference in, in which one goes where. You know, so you, you follow that. All right, so now I want to go up here because I want to get this other color in. It's kind of a dark purple. It's a blend of some of those colors that I've created already. I'm using the same brush because I'm pretty much done. I can put like these button things in there, just tapping it in. And I might go over like this just slightly and then go under the neck with, um, no, I don't want to go to the neck. I want to go over here because there is some light area coming in underneath the hat. It's not totally dark. So I'm going to get those light areas in. And then same thing around here. It kind of comes in this way. And then you, uh, you might see just a little bit coming in there. Now I've also made a medium color for the hat. So I'm hoping that it, color is going to work. And it's not. It's way too dark. So I added some of that flesh tone to lighten it up some. And it did. It gave me the right tone that I wanted. So let me try to remember what did I do because sometimes that's a problem. Now that's a pretty, the color on here is definitely there's a really sharp edge there and I can't get this with this round brush and I don't want to put this brush down yet so I'll go back to that and the head on the top is fairly dark but it's not extremely dark so I'm going to go with that same color I'm going to bring it in around here which is the color fitting where I put the um, underpainting and then I'm going to go in here just a little bit and then I'm going to add some lighter color. I've got a lighter tone. And I'm going to go in and just push that paint in there. And it went into the brim some, but that's okay because I have more paint. I can fix it later. And of course that brim is going to be attached right there. So you want to bring some of those colors in over to the edge just to make sure that it doesn't look like it's, make sure it looks like it's one thing. One entire setting. Okay, what do I want to go to next? I think I want to go to 
I want to do the scarf. All right, and the scarf is going to be kind of that purplish color because I want to bring the hat and the scarf down. So I'm going to go with the dark area first, which is right about here. Then I'm going to grab the medium tone, lighten it up a little bit. And the scarf has a lot of nice folds in it. And I'm not going to get them all, but I will get as many as I can. That's much lighter. I can tell when I put the brush on there that it just didn't blend in like butter. Then it's got some folds going that way. And then there's this color here getting a little bit lighter, so adding some white. And that goes down in here and it gets really light so I'm just going to get a little touch of this I call it a um, a what color is that I think it's like a mint green I'm going to put some of that mint green up here right underneath the neck so it doesn't look like he's got a, a line going across his neck blending that color in and then there is a really dark streak that goes there and I'm going to get that in a little bit later Remember I said these blend in. I pulled some of that color off of that line and it was perfectly. If you hear a little noise in the background, it's my fan going because I work with oils and I have to use um, uh, turpenoid to thin the oils. I certainly don't want to be stuck in a studio, a small studio, and having the turpenoid smell overcoming me and then passing out and then you'd say, what happened? I want that painting finished. Well, guess what? I want that painting finished too. So, back to work. All right. And while I'm uh, finishing up some of this detail, I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, this place, this Apache place I went to. It was just so much fun. I actually, <laughs> they had an opportunity for for if you wanted to go to the gallows and be hung, you could. And I said, hey, that sounds like fun. I've got some uh, photos of that. I'll show you that sometime. These are the folds. And the folds aren't going to go into this shirt, so I'm going to be very careful with that paint. They do go down and they go this direction on the shirt. And then, of course, they're going to go around. So I'm going to come around to this side here. Bring some of that color in. Sorry, you can't see. Actually, I'm going to move this down a little bit so you can see that better. Come over here. And I'm saying those folds are going to wrap all the way around. So they're going to come in this direction. And same thing here. That is fairly light, so I can even go to a white because it's going to kind of disappear. So I added a little bit of white on my brush. I'm going to add a little bit more because I liked how I did that. Pushing that paintbrush in, pushing it out to the side, making those uh, folds work for me. And then it gets really light, but I want to add just a little bit of yellow down here. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Go ask your mother. I don't want to come in there because I like that little bit of yellow. I'm going to try to bring it back. And I didn't, so I have to fix that later. Okay, then come over here. And this is, it's got some folds in here. And those colors come in like this. And then that comes out. The shirt was actually white that he had on, but that's all right, you know. I'm, uh, it's my painting. I can do whatever I want with it. Bring in those folds. Folds go, go sideways. They go up and down. They go all around. It looks like a Picasso painting. I know. And please remember that all my paintings are for sale. On my website, I recently sold one yet uh, one of my paintings. I was very happy with it. Uh, 
it was a Mexican uh, luscious the Mexican women of course a man bought it and that's okay all right so let me bring this here to make that one bring some of that color down there bring some highlights out in there even though that wasn't in there so now what I want to do is what a dance nope not yet okay I want to add a little bit of this color in here lighten it up with some yellow all those different folds in that bandito cowboy I'm reaching over here because I need a smaller brush and I'm gonna try not to drop all my brushes so I'm gonna grab another one out of a different area because I love cleaning brushes don't you 20 30 brushes a day so the head I'm going with uh, a flush color and this color is perfect in here and it goes in this direction right under the eye and then around the eye it kind of outlines the eye same thing over here outlining the eye it gets a little bit darker right in here same color around the eye and I thought of making him like blue but I don't want him to have the blues I added a little bit of darkness in there coming down here along the side it's not quite that dark I can tell it didn't blend by like butter it just looks like it's one and that's what you want to make it look like it's one he's got an ear on here and there was a lot of light areas in the ear and there's there's some pink excuse me some blue some yellows coming in that face giving us just a gorgeous touch now this area is much lighter so I'm going to bring in and just tap that color in doing contours like like uh, Charles Bernard will talk about in his video I'm not even sure if he's he's still doing videos I don't know go ask your mother all right now it gets a little bit darker there so I'm going to add some of this just a little bit of purple in there give his face oh my gosh that face has so many colors and it is just gorgeous folks you need to paint this picture just like this some of that uh, dark color from the hats coming out in fact I don't know why I went out that far with what his ear is there all right so now what I want to do is I've got all the colors in that I need other than there's a real dark area in the lips but I still need to get some lighter colors in there right around here around the mouth it went a little too dark because I touched something else on my palette so I want to go back in there I want to stay true to my colors so folks stay true to your colors and you will not mess up I promise you true to your um, be true to your underpainting all right now there's a really dark area and I've got this kind of brush that can get that dark area in so I'm going to add it with a little bit of turquoise come down here start there go down there right in here and then it kind of goes over the scarf and the scarf has some really dark areas in it too right in here and then it curves down this way and then it kind of curves in there and then there's some s folds that come in this way and these folds of course go all the way to the end so I'm going to bring some of that color out down same thing over here it's not quite as dark so I'm going to just barely gently touch that and I want to get this 
turquoise color coming out here, going in that direction, tapping it in here, tap, 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 and then I want to just outline this to, to give it that feel that it's attached. Go down there with the buttons. All right, looking good. Now what I will be finishing is paying my bills. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm setting my palette down because this is a point where I want to stop talking. I want you to really uh, take a good look at this picture. Look at the uh, cowboy, I, since I don't have anything in my hands. I can talk about the cowboy again, cowboy bandito. Let me double check to make sure I'm getting it in in the um, picture. I'm going to try one more time to go back in here to get what I lost and see if it comes up. I do believe I see the... Okay, there we go. All right, sorry about that. All right, so I do want you to... Uh, so please uh, remember Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 1 p.m. Central Time. I invite you to attend because I enjoy my teaching, my art, and I enjoy being part of your day. And I thank you so much for coming uh, and visiting with me. And don't believe the lies that Satan tells you that you can't be good, you know, that you can't be successful in your art because you certainly can be very, very successful. And you know, sometimes it means you lose the camera frame. Sometimes it means that you're throwing the painting away. That's okay. Believe God, trust him because he never fails you. And just like we, um, we have to trust him and we have to know that the God of the universe is in control of everything, not us. He has slowed, slowed us down during this virus and he will be with us the rest of our lives. We just trust him. So friends, thank you again. And this Mexican bandito will be for sale on my website. Please do check it out. And thank you. Grab your brushes because I'm going to cue up the music. I do while well, I wash my hands a little bit, wipe them off so I don't get paint on my music box. And grab your brushes, dance along with me. Music. Hello, are you there? There you are. Grab those brushes every day. Paint every day because you get better and better the more you paint. Don't get stuck on that one painting. Start another one while you're waiting for it to dry. You know, be there for your friends. Be that brother, lean on another person and let them lean on you, lean on God. Uh, remember to paint, paint. Give yourself a hug every day. You deserve it. And thank you again and Bye-bye, and God bless. I'm going to grab my phone so I can get a closer look. Did someone get the lights? Oh, I forgot I'm the only one in the studio.